Well, hi, I'm John Hart, and welcome back to Mr. America Hart. Hey, today I have two really cool bits of news for you. The first one, I'll get right to that one. A great new study was done recently. I'm going to name the man's name, Martin Refallo. I like saying Refallo, but I don't know if he pronounces it that way. He sounds like he's Australian, so I'm going to go with Refallo, probably is how he says it. But nonetheless, Mr. Refallo has done a very nice study, or conducted one, uh, wherein it's the first original study to compare reps in reserve training versus training to momentary muscular failure, and specifically their effects on muscle hypertrophy, growth. That's what we really want to know about, isn't it? Growth. So a few points I want to make about this study. He's posted up on Instagram. Uh, it's, it's now been peer-reviewed. Uh, it's now open to the public. Anybody can read the entire study. He puts links for it through his Instagram. Uh, I'll, I'll put the links down below right here. So you can go to it yourself if you want to read it. Uh, just a few points that to me were kind of exciting. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm not one of these people that goes, you know, aha, at every point that proves anything that I've been doing or training others to do. And then I'm also not that person that's going to, you know, feel somehow guilted uh, because there's some other points in there that don't necessarily support what I've been doing and maybe proves the opposite. So let's just cut right to the chase on this one. The bottom line is, is in the end, in the end, when they ran this study, in the end, there was no difference in hypertrophy in training with some reps, one to two reps in reserve. So it's kind of close to failure versus training to momentary muscular failure. That was the number one, okay, takeaway on my end. Um, I'm, and in no way, shape, or form is my takeaway extensive. I'm just being really straight up and saying just a few that I remember. And you can check it out for yourself. Edify yourself by reading it yourself. And then number two, they used experienced lifters in this study. Finally, thank you. I, and then some of you are going to say, what do you mean finally? They've done this before. Let's just say, good move. I'm very happy. They're using some experienced lifters. And I saw the average of seven plus years of experience in training. Several former physique athletes or current competing. I like that in bodybuilding. I like that a lot. So they have the ability to train and they know their bodies pretty well. Nutritionally, ah, there's a lot of aspects that this man covered. This is why I, I really enjoyed it. And I, I was led to even give him a comment in his comment section because I believe, in fact, that this study that he's done is going to influence the entire industry for years to come, and then it's going to lead to other things. I don't think that they're done. I don't think he's done in any way, shape, or form. That there's other mm, summaries that they've made from the, this study that will lead them in other paths to give us all, hopefully, more information to find out or to train the best way possible for each of us. So... Uh, the other interesting aspect, nutritionally, they put them on a slight caloric surplus to allow for that growth of the muscle, hypertrophy. We have to make sure that everybody involved is eating enough calories and enough protein, they said, to supply the needs of that growth mechanism. So in both cases, there were 19 subjects in the study, in, in all cases, on both sides of the aisle. They were, in fact, trained and ate in a caloric surplus. When I said both sides of the aisle, get ready for this one. The study itself <laughs> didn't go with different individuals training different ways, but rather one leg versus the other leg. And that was really interesting as well. So hypertrophy speaking, they got to see exactly the effect on each leg of an individual. Really cool. And then the other one. Uh, uh, in the end, the summaries or the, 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 the conclusions to the study came down to some really cool things. And that was uh, that statistically, they kept in the end, the volume was consistent between the reps in reserve versus the momentary muscular failure training. So the volume was the same. That's really interesting to me because when we're talking about training a muscle to failure, 
there's going to be more uh, lactic acid. There's going to be more waste products. There's going to be uh, more of, of a need to recover from that if multiple sets are done. So, of course, someday I'd love to see a one-set model put out versus a multi-set model. But in this case, uh, they use the same volume between it. So really, they were paring it down to the type of training and the effect that it had on the muscle. And apparently, in the end, they came to the same conclusion, which is, period, that training to leaving some reps on the table, reps in reserve, one or two reps in reserve, and they also detail how they got accurate measurements of that with the trained individuals. They were very good at approximating reps in reserve, and then the slowed down speeds at the end of each set versus the ones who trained to momentary muscular failure. It really, really uh, looked like there was no significant difference. It was a measurement on a thigh, on a quad. And uh, if anything, it was kind of cool to see different parts of the quad because they did it using a leg press and then a leg extension, followed by a leg extension, not necessarily jumping from one to the other. But in the end, that order of exercises remained consistent. The frequency was twice a week. So there are some things on the higher volume or the higher frequency camps that, you know, sounds really good in that end. Uh, and then we have the element of training to momentary muscular failure. And the closer they train to that, how it seemed to produce more muscle growth, hypertrophy. So these are just some of my takeaways on it. And so I wanted to share that bit of good news for you. You can go for yourself and read the study and check out all the details. Uh, you know, the doc, he puts, he puts a good summary up, even just on his Instagram. So even if you just did that and read all of that, just to get the summary of what he did, that's pretty cool. Uh, but he also puts links for those who want to go into really deep, take a deep dive and go uh, further than that. Now, the second bit of news. The second bit of news is y'all have been asking me. Uh, I've had, I've been berated uh, by some people about where are my courses? Okay, John, it's been years. You know, people have been putting out courses. Why don't you have the same? And, and I do realize that, uh, you know, there was sort of a need and I've been asked a lot through you, my subscribers especially, uh, where are some courses? So I finally got convinced. I took some time. It wasn't about a matter of being convinced. It was a time factor. So I have a full-time gig outside of what I do here in YouTube land. And so my days, the hours are accounted for. So I did make the time for it and put that together in, this, you know, in recent months. And it's great. I'm really happy with how it came out. High Intensity Training with Mr. America Heart is the name of the course. So you can get a hold of that. I'll put the link down below. And just for you, right now, it's getting released today as we speak. This is February 25th. Yeah, February 25th, Saturday. As we speak, it's being released. And you, the first 100 people to buy the course, can get a 20% discount by using the code HEART20. So feel free, go ahead and hit it. It's an additional 20% off. That's not counting the percentage you're getting off just for it being the launch. So we do have a slight discount already happening on it. So combining it with that 20%, you're getting a nice fat discount. So great courses and on the full package, I'm also including all of my books. So go, go to that link down below. And you hit it and go get those things, get the courses, get the books. Man, I'm really happy to be part of your fitness journey, part of your bodybuilding journey. It's an honor and a privilege. So I just want to say one more time to you before I go. Listen, before you go, <laughs> off to my left, you're going to see that disc that pops up. That disc is a subscribe button for my channel. Please give that thing a tap. Off to your left, you're going to see a thumbs up button. If you're liking the videos that I'm doing, go right ahead. Give that thing a tap. Turn it blue. And let the YouTube algorithm know how much you like my videos. And listen, one last thing from my heart to you. It's really an honor and privilege. I look forward to doing more content for you. Thank you. See you soon.